Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. It's been a little while because the world has gone crazy. I tried to start filming a studio vlog the other week and I was just too much of a mess unfortunately to deal with it. My anxiety has been sky high and then I tried to film a tutorial for you on how I do sticker sheets and again I just had a meltdown so I'm really sorry it's been a little while. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. I am going to show you how I use click and drop to post my orders because at the moment, let's be honest, nobody wants to go into the post office and actually be near people. So um, what I actually do with my orders is I use Royal Mail click and drop and then I just post them in a post box and it's nice and easy. It doesn't take very long at all and I thought I'd show you guys how to do it. You pay for it all online and it's just super, super quick. So yeah. Um, I did a poll on Instagram to see if it's something that you guys would want some help with and I had a really positive response so I thought I would do that. So first things first, what you're going to need is your orders packed and ready. You probably just saw that I've been packing some orders. I've just done a few so that I can show you the tutorial and I'll, I'll pack the rest later. You will need some labels and a printer. If you don't have sticky labels, you can use paper and cut them out and stick them on, but I use these labels. It just looks like a piece of paper, but this is um, a pre-cut sticky label thing. It's got four labels on it, and this is kind of the perfect size for postage labels. You will also need some scales. I got these off of, I think, eBay or Amazon for a couple of quid, and they're ideal. And probably a pen if you're doing international shipping. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so, first things first, we need to open up the internet, and you want to type in Royal Mail Click and Drop. Okay, so the first result that comes up is Royal Mail Click and Drop. If you haven't already got an account, you want to click sign up and you will create your account by adding in your details here and basically registering. Now, I already have an account, so I'm going to get logged in. Okay, so when you are logged in, you need to go to the settings tab and you'll have a section at the top called integrations. If we go into here, this is where you add your integrations and you want to click add new integration and you'll see all of the different kind of platforms that you can use with it. So if you've got an Etsy shop, you can register your Etsy shop. If you've got Shopify, you can add Shopify. Now I use both, but they also have Amazon, eBay, not on the high street. Uh, as you can see, there's quite a few. Now I'm just going to click on the Etsy one to begin with. First thing you want to do is add your trading name. So you would type in here whatever your name is, whatever your shop is called. Let's just say my shop. <laughs> and here you want to put in what you want to call it. Now, you've got a few options here. You can mark orders as dispatched on the channel, which means that once you've finished on click and drop and you click, yes, I've dispatched this order, it will automatically dispatch it on your channel, on your Etsy shop as well. So you don't have to do it twice. Now you can always turn on these settings at any time. So at the moment, just click whatever you want. Next thing to do is click connect to Etsy. Now, if at any point you have any troubles, there's a button here at the top and it's, or a link here, should I say. So if you click here and it will tell you the process. So we've already done this part. We've gone to integrations. We've started adding in our store and the store name. And the next thing it would do is take you to Etsy where you log in, you give it permission, and then that should be it. And your orders should automatically then go into click and drop going forward. I don't think it will add any 
uh, orders that you've already got but going forward your orders should automatically go through to click and drop now the same is uh, for Shopify it's a really similar thing so you would put in your URL here and again there's a guide so you would da, 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 add in your URL then you need to give it access once you're in Shopify and then you can return to your click and drop account add in all of your details looks like you need to add in your store location it's been a long time since i've actually used like signed up because i've used click and drop for such a long time now so unfortunately i can't remember the exact process and i am by no means an expert on this however i'm just going to do my best to try and explain and talk you through what i do basically so in theory you've now signed up you've added all of your stores that need to be added it's the next day you've got some orders and your orders are now showing in here so as you can see i've got 20 new orders now i've already packed seven <laughs> to show you <laughs> so you want to click into new orders now i am going to have to blur out some information for you because of you know day protection and all that you can see here we've got our order numbers we've got the channel so you can see shopify etsy channel reference the date the products that they have ordered all of the customer details how much the order is and so on and so forth so let's find my first order so first thing we need to do is weigh our order out now i know that one pin is normally around 30 grams maybe a little bit less but i normally average it out and if they've got one pin i go for 30 grams so we're going to weigh our parcel this one's 22 grams now if you've got one order it's fine you're going to know who your customer is but when you're dealing with multiple orders what i tend to do is write their name on the top and how many pins they've got because then it gives me an idea of how much their postage is going to be so i know that 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 and that so these four orders all have one pin each so they're all going to be maximum of 30 grams now that's how i do it i do not weigh every individual parcel and from here i would basically batch them all together so these all have one pin these all have two pins these have three pins so on and so forth and then i roughly work out what the weight's going to be for all of them because they're normally pretty similar as i said that one was 22 i normally put 30 grams just so that you know if one of them's a bit more it's covered then okay so first thing i'm going to do we're just going to do one order to begin with and then i'll show you how i do multiple orders so i'm going to select the order that i want to apply my postage to it already automatically comes up on this drop down as apply postage but you've got lots of different options you can mark it as dispatched you can delete it you can request label refunds if you've accidentally done the wrong postage there's lots of different things you can do so we're going to apply the postage and click go now it's automatically picked up 30 grams because it knows that this particular item is 30 grams but here you would put in the weight and you want to choose your package size so i use little pip boxes and these are large letter it's already selected this which is just amazing it's a very intuitive system and this is an international one so i'm going to choose international standard you've got lots of different options if you want to do track shipping and if it's a uk order it will automatically come up with uk options none of these are available because of the fact that i've just chosen international standard now this particular one is going abroad, which means we need to add in our customs information. So mine has been pre-filled. I'm going to click edit just to show you. So here you can search for a product and enter it this way, or you can manually add all of your details in. You can save the service to your favorites. We want to do apply because we're going to add more to it. Okay. So now I've shown you how to do one. We're going to go back to our dashboard, click on new orders and do the next few. Okay, so I've selected three orders here that all have one pin in and these are ones that I've packed. I'm going to apply the postage. I'm going to put in the weight. They're all 30 grams. They're all international standard, large letter. 
Luckily, all of my contents are already in there, so I don't need to add any customs information. But if you need to, it will come up blank and you can just enter the information. We're gonna apply, okay. Now, when it comes to saving product information, there is an option, I think, in the settings. Let's have a look. I think it's shipping rules. So if we go to shipping rules, you can set up rules that if it is a large letter, for example, it will automatically go as Royal Mail second class because that's what I use. Now, another thing that we want to make sure is that the label format is correct. There's lots of different things that you can add in here. So I would really suggest having a little look through all of the different sections and seeing if there's anything that you want to you know you want to do okay so if we go into label format you can choose the type of label that you're going to be using now i use the a4 sheet which has four labels and that is actually under six by four now i don't include a dispatch note so i put mine as a separate label and dispatch note because if you put it as integrated as you can see it's going to print out the label and a dispatch note on the same sheet of paper which we don't want we want the label to come out on its own i'm going to change that back to six by four and as you can see this is what the label will come out as this is what a dispatch confirmation would come out as this is what your customs form is going to look like and this is what the big old custom form will look like for like i think that's big parcels I choose do not generate dispatch note because I just don't want them. It's a waste of paper. And I like to generate a custom declaration with my orders. You don't have to if you have your own CN22 labels on a roll, but I print mine out because it puts all the custom information in for you. All you have to do is sign and date it and it's a lot easier. Okay, so you would save that rule. And in theory, you should be ready to actually print your postage labels. And once you've done all of these rules and things like that, they're set up forever unless you want to change it. So as you can see, I've got four orders ready for printing. So we're going to go into here. We're going to select them all. Click pay and generate labels. You can check your orders here. Make sure you've got the right postage on. Click your little confirm button. Now I pay with PayPal, but you can pay with other ways as well. Okay, so now I've paid, it's just processing the order for me. And as you can see, we've got our little PDF down here. I'm gonna click that and open it up. So this is great. We've got our postage labels, we've got our customs forms. However, as you can see, if we print this out as it is, it's gonna do that as a whole A4 page. So when you go to your print settings, if you click more and do pages per sheet four, you can see this is now how they're going to come out, which is a lot better. So I'm going to print these. Hello? Nothing's happening. <laughs> What's going on here? There we go. We're printing now. Okay, so I've got my labels. I will show you the rest of this in a moment. In the meantime, what I am going to do is show... All right. Right, okay. Sorry about that. My printer is now <laughs> shut up. Okay. So... What I'm gonna do quickly is go back to the dashboard and just show you what happens. Are you done? Right, I'm gonna go back to the dashboard, show you what happens if you try and process international and UK orders at the same time. So we're gonna go into new orders. Now I haven't packed these, or these orders, but I'm just gonna pretend I have. So I've got this one here, which is for Canada. We've got this one here, which is United Kingdom. So when I go to apply postage, it's come up uh, with a warning. It says you cannot post domestic and international orders at the same time, which is fine. You just click OK. And here, if you hover over this part, you can choose all domestic and all international orders. So if I had, say, 20 orders and 10 were international, 10 were the UK, it would select all 10, and then you can apply postage to the 10 UK ones, and then you go back here and go all 10 international, and it will do the postage for the international ones nothing else is different on those so it will tell you if you need to do customs information as well so the uk ones it won't come up with any customs information because you don't need to enter it another thing that you can do is if you have something like i do like a patreon account or i don't know you want to send something 
as like a giveaway and you, you don't have an order you can do manual order entry so if you click this little sh uh, buy and print a shipping label button that looks like a lorry or a truck it will come up here and you can literally enter their name their address all the details you need but if you start putting in a postcode yeah let's go haven't road and then it will come up with all the house numbers you just click a house number and it adds the address in Basically, I have no idea who lives at this address, by the way. Yeah, and then you click create order and apply postage. It will take you to the same screen as normal where you start adding in your weight, what box it is, what service you want to use. You can apply the postage and pay for the labels. Now, if you want to create an order for somebody that you post to all of the time, got their address in. If you type an address reference in this box, this is Lucy Lucy from Patreon. <laughs> when you create the order and apply the postage, it will save all of those details under Lucy Lucy Patreon. And all you need to do then is instead of typing the postcode in this box, you would type in Lucy Lucy Patreon and it will bring up your address. So that is how you add a manual order as well. But most of the time, hopefully you're gonna be dealing with orders that come through from your shop and you won't need to do that. Okay, so next thing we need to do is fill out our customs forms. So as you can see, we have got one at customs label. It has already filled out that we've got one enamel pin. It's got the weight, it's got the value. Here you've got your customs code and country of origin. So all you need to do is sign and date it there, which is just so much easier than having to fill it out by hand. So I'm just gonna quickly sign and date all of these. Now, when I was on there, I just saw um, a section for I think you can like scan in your signature, which I didn't know. It might be a new function, but I'm gonna have a little look into that because if it means I don't have to sign all of these every time, then that would be nice. Now, because I actually use these tiny little boxes, these labels are actually too big for the boxes. So I'll show you how I do that as well. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is actually cut this customs label. so that it is smaller because you don't need this bottom information part. It's just the actual label that you need. So let's find who this is for. And then I stick it on the back. So there's our customs label on the back. And then I just need to find the postage label, stick it to the front. Now the postage label, we can't cut down. So what I tend to do is I start sticking it from the bottom and then I just wrap it around. And there you go. It's I've never had any issues, Royal Mail have never had any issues with me doing that. So one of the things I wanted to say is when you get, say, three postage labels and you end up with this one left over, do not throw it away. I save any that on a full four sheet and then when it's acquired today and I've only got one order to print, I just pop this in my printer and out it comes. But you need to be careful with the type of labels you get because I have had some labels in the past where my printer doesn't like it, but it seems to be okay with these ones. So I actually get these labels from, I think it's called onlinelabels.com. I'll link it below, but they're all pre-cut. And um, yeah, like I said, make sure you keep these, use them, don't waste them, don't throw them away. Now that I have put my labels on my orders, I am going to mark them as dispatched. So you've got a nice button here that says click to mark them as dispatched. It's recognized that we've put our labels on our four orders. So we'll click here. Yes, we wanna mark them as dispatched. And if we go back to our dashboard, you can see it says four orders dispatched today. The next thing is basically taking them to the post box and dropping them in without going and seeing or speaking to anybody. Now, I use this all day, every day, all year round. The only problem is if you've got a big parcel, you can't fit it in a normal size post box, so I do have to take those in. Um, but anything I'd say up to A5 pip box will go in a normal post box. And that's basically it. I hope this is helpful. Like I said before, I'm not an expert. 
as much as I'd love to say I am. But I just wanted to show you the process because it's actually super, super quick. It seems really daunting to begin with, but once you've set it up, it's so quick, it's so easy. I've paid online. I don't have to write out anybody's labels. I see people still to this day handwriting people's addresses and I'm like, you have time for that? Because I don't. And I don't get as many orders as you. Like, what? Or people handwriting customs labels still and things like that. It's just, you just don't need to. So hopefully this has been helpful. If you've got any questions, please let me know and I will try my best to answer them. And if you get stuck with setting anything up, like I said, have a look at all the guides and I definitely recommend having a play around with all of the settings because there's so many different rules and things like that that you can set up. So yeah, have a little play, see what you think. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It's not a tutorial per se, but I just hope that it's been helpful to show you, do a little walkthrough of what I do. And hopefully I will see you again very soon for a studio vlog. Anyway, it's been lovely chatting to you. I feel like I've missed you all lots and lots, but I will see you again soon. Bye.